Thank you very much. So I will be talking about node local modules and uh, its uh, discovery within my company. So a little bit about myself. My name is Radu Kreoșteanu. I'm originally from Romania. I am Chief Technical Officer at Next Generation Mobility or Fleetster. We are a small company here in south of Munich. We do um, web services related to connected cars, which effectively means uh, corporate car sharing, fleet management, logistics, and a few other related services, um, mainly for the corporate world. Our technology stack is uh, MongoDB, Node.js, um, Ember.js, React, React Native, and uh, TypeScript. Now migrating to Node.js with TypeScript for most of our services. Um, I uh, may mess up a little bit out of this presentation, so I'll have to excuse myself ahead of time because I have a one-month-old son and I am quite tired. I haven't slept well for a few good weeks now, so it's, I'm not sure how well it will go, but let's give it a try. So, what are the advantages of making use in node local modules in structuring your application? You simplify the project structure, that is the primary reason. It helps in transitioning some of your code or logic into something that can be shared across multiple applications. It's making it a little bit easier to test with Jest if you know uh, what that is and what it does. And since uh, someone has made a reference to the subject of dependency injection, you basically get free dependency injection by leveraging uh, import statements or require statements from Node. What are the disadvantages? Well, you get a little bit of development overhead, so it requires you to structure your application in a certain way, and you must spend a little bit of extra time in defining your modules. And this is other, a little bit of a trick here. It enforces you to respect encapsulation in your code structure. Now, theoretically, this should not really be a disadvantage, but it does require you to spend a bit of extra time thinking about the structure of your um, application. And uh, it helps in the long term, but it's probably not a good choice for prototyping or fast development in that sense. All right, so <clears throat> I'm going to tell you a little bit of a uh, fairy tale now, uh, starting with the very beginning. So in the beginning, <coughs> life was simple. You had your little node application, maybe with Express in this case, it was doing what it was supposed to and everybody is happy. But then one day, the project manager, Florian, decides to come in and says, it's all nice and very well thought out, but it needs to actually do something. So you say, okay, fine. We will add some different functionality to our little project so that it actually does something. And uh, you add your little controllers or different things that it needs and the project structure is simple and it works. So after some time of doing this, uh, Tim, the CEO, comes over and says, good news, Radu, your project is a great success. Everybody is happy, but you have a little bit of a problem in your little application. It only works in German and only works in the GMT plus one time zone. So you keep developing new features, implementing internationalization and uh, time zone handling and lots of fancy features. And one day you wake up to discover that your application has grown a little bit. You now have 67,000 lines of JavaScript and 33,000 lines of templating and a pretty significant directory structure. To make everything a lot worse, you discover that in a lot of places you end up with something like this, where you have defined a number of necessary utilities throughout your backend services that get imported in very difficult to remember paths. So what to do? Well, as it says there, you really should implement an injector to handle the path dependencies. But uh, developing or implementing dependency injection is not as easy as it sounds. So what to do? In this particular case, after spending quite a number of years trying to find solutions, one of the areas that I have sort of explored or tried for quite some time, which is also obvious, is to structure or extract out of the application certain base components. So if you have a client-side application, one obvious step in simplifying your project is to extract maybe a small library of uh, basic components, your buttons, your input selects, or something that you can use as the uh, basic bricks of your application. I've tried to extract this into a Git repository that then gets imported into my project via the package manager. 
However, every time you want to add a new component or you want to change one of the existing components through this method, you have to open up the second project, you modify it there, you commit, you push, you pull in the other project, you rebuild the project, you open it up to find out that actually you messed up. So now you go again and this cycle is sort of making it a very unpleasant experience to develop and makes the whole idea of creating little modules unfeasible. So we get back to uh, same situation by leveraging node modules, local node modules to be precise. So you can use in node, uh, you can define a file to represent a module that will then be imported by the node package manager as if it was an actual node module. So you create like a little bit of a library, but it's actually part of your project. It's not on Git, it's not in the uh, node registry or anywhere, it's just within your project. But every time you build your project, it gets copied over into the node modules and then distributed to wherever the application needs. And we have a little bit of an example here where you can see. So the FDB is just uh, supposed to be a module for managing the interaction between the, uh, this application and the database. So it ma manages the um, uh, communication at a lower level. And it's basically accessed from almost everywhere within the application. So you, uh, this will clean up the access to this particular module. Now a node module in this case will require a package JSON as you can see here. So we, we define a package JSON and since I'm using TypeScript, the original point of, of the entry into the application still has to be a regular JavaScript. So that part doesn't really work that well because in order to structure the application, the module as cleanly as possible, we have this source directory. Once TypeScript has compiled, it will compile into the type into the distribution folder and then the index is just pointing to the distribution folder which you don't see here. So <clears throat> how does this work? Well you add a reference inside of your package JSON to the file as you can see here so I specified that the FDB is located inside of source FDB and then wherever I need it inside of my application all I need to do is just literally import it as if it was an actual module. The main advantage of using this approach is that you can now create effectively lots of little node modules. So in one of the first projects where we have implemented this approach, we then proceeded to systematically implement this approach. We ended up with something like 15 different modules of different level of complexity and architecture we have just started. So it's, you can implement it at a very high degree. But let's dig a little bit deeper into a bit of the backbone. Unfortunately, the screenshot's a bit small. I wanted to show you how it effectively integrates into the um, uh, node infrastructure. Because one of the fundamental problems in order to make you better use of this in active development is to make sure that as you are changing your module, the node package manager is also updating the reference so that when your application constructs, you get the latest version. Uh, and this was one of the difficult pieces of this puzzle. The advised method is that every time you change your local module, you update the version of your package JSON, which then when you do npm install or grunt or whatever it is that you use to manage your build process will detect that the local version is different than the one that your project requires. But then practically you have to change the package JSON in the module that you adjusted and then the, also the version in the main package file. So it adds quite a bit of overhead in doing this. So we wanted an automatic way of doing that. So we just made a very simple bash script, which I will put a reference to once uh, in the meetup itself, which does it all for you. So it looks for changes to the local modules. You have to define a um, naming convention for your module. So in our case, we just, you can see it here, we define that all of our modules have to start with F dash. Uh, you can see it here. So it looks into the source directory and watches for changes for those particular directories. Every time you change a file, it basically just recompiles and copies over in the uh, node modules directory. So this means you can actively develop and change your uh, node module and then it will work uh, seamlessly. So how do we take this to the next level? Well, let's say you have a project which has all of this nice structure implemented 
Uh, how do you then share your code across multiple projects? Well, the most effective way we have identified is actually to declare that particular module as a sub-module of, or as a git sub-module of your primary repository. Then you can have your dedicated uh, repository to manage your node module that you had created. And anytime you do need to change it, you can change it directly into your project structure. You commit and you push to the modules repository. So then whoever else is relying on the same local node module can just pull the changes from the remote. And using Jest, you can then define uh, mocks for the modules that you have constructed. So if you want your application, for example, to replace the FDB module that you have defined with the mock version, which behaves however, one, however you like in your tests, you can just literally use Jest and treat this as a practical NPM module, just like you might have been using Jest before, if you were using Jest. Um, yeah, actually, that's pretty much it. Any questions?